Ayodamora. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, let us welcome Pastor Abimbola Oludara. Without Jesus, we won't be here today. Jesus is the reason why we are gathered together so that we can share out of our life's experiences and it can impact on everyone, bring a change, and help us to move further in life. Let's share a word of prayer. Father, we submit everything to you this morning. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the one who has control over everything on the earth. So, Father, we ask you take absolute control. You take charge this morning. Father, touch the hearts that you need to touch this morning as I stand as a vessel. Bring transformation. Bring light and renewal to lives in the name of Jesus. Blessed be in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. So, can we have the slides, please? Okay, next slide. That's the preamble, and um, in this preamble, I just want to quickly talk about the relationship between Elijah and Elisha. Elisha was uh, an animal farmer, or he had oxen and he was plowing the land, and I'm sure that uh, Elijah must have uh, watched Elisha, and he must have had direction from God to choose Elisha as his assistant, and of course his successor. And that also brings to mention that in the church today, how many people are aware that uh, Rena Bonke is late? And that when he was going to die, he chose a 28 year old man as a successor. How many people are aware of that? If that is what is called succession planning. And in succession planning, you also take cognizance of character. Rehabonke said of the young man at the age of 70 that this man will have stood shoulder to shoulder. We have blazed the trail together in evangelism. We have seen anointing pour out upon this young man to the extent that I am confident that the mantle of God is upon him. And a lot of people have commented that this is a rare thing, you know, to observe, especially in this part of our world, where either as ministers or corporate leaders or political leaders, we hang on tightly to the extent that we become reluctant to let go from age of 70 to 28 years. I'm sure some people will say it's too young, but anointing has no age. He saw the anointing of God upon the life of this young man, and he brought him. He called him to come and join him in ministry. So that's the case with Elijah and Elisha. I just want to quickly draw that the process of the relationship between Elijah and Elisha was a time of mentoring and a time of observation to watch the character of this man, to see if this man is a consistent and steadfast person. And three times he told him, he said, wait for me at Bethel. Elisha said, no, I will go with you. He said, wait for me at Jericho. He said, no, sir, I will go with you. He said, tarry with me, I tarry and wait for me. Let me cross the river Jordan. He said, no. He said, wherever you go, I will go. And thereafter he asked him, he said, what do you want of me? Elisha told him, he said, I want a double of this anointing, this unction that you have. And he said, if you watch me translate, you will have it. And he has tried to throw a red herring at him, a deception, you know, to take away his attention. But Elisha kept his eyes on the prize. And that is a resultant effect of his character. It shows loyalty. And among so many other things we will say this morning about loyalty, 
Loyalty is about consistency. It's about steadfastness. It's about paying allegiance to whom it is due. So and finally, in 2 Kings 2.14, it says, And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters. They parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Loyalty has its rewards. Elisha got the reward of his loyalty by a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Next slide, please. I don't think, can you see, can you read it? Is it readable? Thank you, okay. So if you are faithful and devoted to someone or something, you are loyal. Loyal comes from the old French word loyal, which means something like legal, but if someone is only loyal to you because the Lord demands or requires him to be, that is not true loyalty, which will come from the heart, not a contract. So some of the words that can be described or used instead of loyalty will be allegiance, faithfulness, fidelity, obedience, fealty, dependability, reliability, trustworthiness, consistency, constancy, dedication, devotion, and adherence. Of course, the opposite of that will be treachery, disloyalty, and also betrayal. A case in point, Judas betrayed Jesus. We'll get to that later, but very strictly, the real opposite of loyalty is betrayal. When one is not loyal to a cause, to a belief, or to a person, that person has betrayed the cause, has betrayed the belief, has betrayed that person's friendship. Definition of loyalty is the quality of being faithful to someone or something else. An example of loyalty is how a dog feels about its human owner. Let me, at this point, issue a disclaimer. God has only given me the providence, the opportunity to stand before everyone today. I am not here to condemn anybody. I'm only here to highlight some certain things that can help us as Christians, you know, and as people that do business in the marketplace. Praise the Lord. I also, in the preparation of this presentation, I have learned a lot, and it has caused me to do a lot of reflection. When I was five years old, as at that time, I was the last born in my family then. And because of an incident that happened when I was two years ago, two years old, when I lost my biological mother, there was this tendency for a whole lot of people in the family to shower me with so much affection and attention. And I think my father realized that if this child should grow up like this, with this kind of entitlement, he may not become a better person in life. So one day he took me out, he bought a puppy dog for me. And everything that the dog needed, the collar, the chain, and everything. And when we got home, I was excited, but he said, you don't eat until this dog has eaten. You make sure that three times a week you bath for this dog. You make sure that you take this dog out for walks. Now, I didn't really care because for me it was an exciting thing to do. But I had a relationship with the first dog. My father bought me a second dog. I had two dogs. They were my best friends. They were my loyalists. I could go anywhere with nobody attempting to bully me because my dogs would stand up for me. And that was the basis upon which I began to think around this topic. Somebody wrote in his book, he said, 
if you want loyalty, get a dog. A dog will show you unparalleled loyalty. I remember that sometimes in anger or out of the fact that the dogs have misbehaved, I will kick them and whip them. They will yelp and run away. In another couple of minutes again, they will come wagging their tail. And these are stories or experiences that we as human beings can learn from. When you are loyal to somebody, you will easily forgive. When you have loyalty in your heart to a cause, it will be easy for you to follow through on whatever assignment has been given to you. So what exactly is the concept of loyalty? Loyalty in general use is a devotion and faithfulness to a nation, to a cause, to philosophy, to a country, to a group, to a person, to beliefs, you know, to faith. Philosophers often disagree on what can be an object of loyalty. They argue that loyalty is strictly interpersonal and only another human being can be the object of one's loyalty. Loyalty is the quality of staying firm in your friendship or support for something or someone. Now, skip all this about uh, the old French, you know, because that's just, uh, you know, the philological or the genealogy of the word loyalty through different languages. But loyalty is also the state or the quality of being loyal, faithfulness to commitments or obligations, faithful adherence to a sovereign leader, a belief of faith, and a cause. An example or instance of faithfulness, adherence of, of a man with fierce loyalties. Now, today, I have something here, which is uh, the, the Nigerian uh, map of a truth. Most of us, we, at one point or the time or the other, we are mandated to take, you know, an oath of allegiance, especially maybe if you belong to the military or you are a politician, you take an oath of office, which is like an allegiance to the country. But daily, every one of us, we have at different times, maybe in schools or in our areas of endeavor, we've been required to take the pledge. It will surprise you that some people till the pledge is. The pledge is an allegiance of your loyalty to the nation in which you belong to, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It says, I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, to be loyal, to be honest, to serve Nigeria with all my strength, to defend our unity and uphold our honor and glory. So help me. God. We are pledging allegiance to the country. We are showing loyalty to the country. Just like in the military, loyalty is a very important and core component of the relationship court between junior officers, senior officers, and vice versa. A senior officer or an officer would demand total loyalty from his soldiers. Do you know why? Because if he cannot ascertain that his soldiers are totally and extremely loyal to him, in the day of battle, orders may not be obeyed. And that is why in the military, loyalty is considered a deep core value. Even in corporate organizations today, you begin to see that competence is not the only yardstick for getting along in organizations. Somebody says that I would rather employ an average person with 100% character than an extremely smart person with zero character. 
That person with zero character is most likely going to put you in trouble in the future. But an average person can still be trained, can still be helped to perform very well, and that the most important thing is that he has good character. The one with zero character will rob your company blind. Next slide. See, is a character trait. Character is the maker of a man's man with an average skill and good character than a brilliant one with zero character. There's nothing that makes a man's life other than his character. I'm sure that uh, those of you, or many of us, who have had the privilege of sitting under Reverend Tony's ministrations over the years, will know that what I'm saying about character is not a new or strange thing. Am I correct in saying that? We have had so much about character. We've had so much about what it means, how important as a Christian, it makes me wonder when Christians who work in the marketplace find it easy to lie, to steal, and to bribe, and they will still come back into the church. The message there is that such a Christian can never have a testimony in the marketplace. Tunde Lemo, the former deputy governor of Central Bank, he said something. He said when he became, even just before he became the MD of Wema Bank, he said some people brought a deal to him. And in that deal, he was going to make a lot of money. But as a Christian, he held firm to his beliefs that this is not right. And he insisted that he never wanted to be part of that deal. Somebody else in the bank accepted to work with them. Guess what? That deal backfired. Assuming, I'm sure some of you know that Tunde Lemo is a Christian from the Foursquare Gospel Church. Also, I think at that time he was a deacon before he became a reverend. What kind of testimony would he have had if the newspapers had been awash with bank senior manager involved in a deal? Will it be easy for him to preach the gospel after that? Opportunity wasted. Praise the Lord. So the issue of character is very important in the life of a believer. Character is a pattern of an individual behavior. It is a lifestyle of an individual, and the lifestyle of an individual can become a pointer to the character of the individual. Somebody who is shifty, you ask for the time of the day. Whatever he says, you still have to go and cross-check to find out if that is the truth. In a workplace, or even in the church, You have a meeting, you make a call to a brother. Where are you? I'm on Shogule Street. And then you step out of Shogule Street. For the next one hour, you can't find the brother. People lie easily on the phone. And you see, that makes me also to tell us that in this issue of loyalty, a lot of us are beginning to throw a lot of codes aside, even in the church. We think that some things are no longer important, that grace covers everything. But whatever you do today that is not particularly good is a foundation for something worse in the future. If you don't take care of it now, it's not only goes you, it's going to bring you down. So if you think you can go through life without having read of loyalty to anybody. Don't expect anybody to be loyal to you. It's a fact. You don't show allegiance to the cause, to our belief, 
which is Christianity, which is Jesus Christ, ultimately God, then you want a reciprocal from God. Though God is not man, he doesn't break covenants. But whatever you do without any allegiance, it will show you up later and it will work against you. So character is a pattern of an individual behavior. It is a life, the lifestyle of an individual can become a pointer to the character of an individual. If character is a pathway onto releasing us into what God has proposed for us, this way can be developed. The pathway can be built upon, improved upon, it can grow. There can be an advancement of this pathway. This improvement of your lifestyle can be heaven's package to you. So character can be improved. And I want us to understand today that any behavioral pattern, any character that we exhibit today, you can reverse it. Don't come out and say, oh, this is the way I am, I cannot change. Hello? Character, once it is observed to have a flaw, correct it, build it, and change it. Praise God. So I'll give you like three scenarios. These are very personal to me. There are things that, they weren't things that I had from people. I was part and parcel involved in those experiences. The first one, when the civil out in 1967, my father had a subordinate in the organization he worked for then. Now we hid this man in our house in Suru until 1968, and when it was no longer safe for him to continue to hide him in our home. My father took him as far as the Jebo day so that he could return back home. At the end of the Civil War, my father pulled all the necessary strings to back into the same organization. Now, fast forward to 1971. There was an attempted fraud of about three million pounds in the organization. My father's signature was also forged. Who was then the head of the finance and accounts of that organization was initially arrested, later released, and then placed on suspension by the organization. That, let me make a digression a little bit. That was a turning point, even in my own of prayers. My father had a younger sister in Ibadan. Anytime she comes from Ibadan, see her alighting from the taxi, I will take off. Because I know that that same night they are going for a surgery, she will drag me along. I'm scarce. But when this challenge happened to our family, the woman was a CAC. So she came from Ibadan. And that started a series, you know, of revival. Uh, vigils. We never did vigils before that time. There was no challenge. So there was nothing to pray for on the All Saints Church, Yaba. But when a challenge, you know, happens to a family and there is no other way to turn to, you turn to God. So apart from that, we were praying. And God did answer the prayers that you can't go through life, you know, feeling as if everybody is on your side. That just let's watch and pray. And you will round up with Christian, mighty, wise, me. Bo, be a shinso. Ni ani ota, lowa, ma, shora. But we thank God that family that we are today, we do not have such things. So why is loyalty the most important quality? Of? Can we have that slide? Loyalty is one of the traits that people generally say is important to them in relationships. It could be romantic, it could be friendless or otherwise, yet, some of us don't make it a priority or give that quality enough 
credit. And that's why I'm talking about loyalty today. First, don't think, you know, it is proper to show loyalty that as long as you have a vertical relationship with God, you don't care about your horizontal relationships. But down the line, I will show you that as it is desirable to have loyalty towards God, it is also appropriate to have horizontal loyalties, praise the Lord. So loyalty is the ability to put others before yourself and stick with them in good times. Show loyalty to friends, show loyalty to family and significant others by being honest, trustworthy, support and generous. Maintain healthy boundaries with those around you so you can be loyal to them in a productive way. Now, loyalty strengthens the bond between friends, increases the trust between them, and you know you can always open up to that, all of which is needed for a friendship to grow and sustain. Four traits of a loyal friend that we're from. A loyal friend is honest, and a good rule to remember, don't expect loyalty if you cannot provide honesty. Loyal friends are impartial. They may sound blessed, but it is not in an apathetic attribute. What it means is that when you have a friend who is impartial, you can expect that whatever this is, that person is going to tell you the honest truth. What I've also discovered is that a lot of people are too deep to be honest with their friends. I prefer somebody to be very blunt with me. Just tell me the way it is. Don't go round and round because I don't understand that kind of diplomacy. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. When people need to tell you the truth, tell them the truth if they are your friends. You have not done well. It's not as if you are castigating that person. Truth that you don't say today will hurt both of you tomorrow. So where there is a need to say the truth in love, praise the Lord. Loyal friends do not do shunner friendships. Oh, I'm only friends with you because we can only do social. Oh, I'm only friends with you within the church. Oh, I'm only friends with you because we are neighbors. Or oh, I'm only friends with you because of what I can take from you. And I see that a lot. Conditional loyalties. Today, somebody respects, puts you in a position of a perceived favor that they are going to receive from you. Do you know that Mr. Olusegun Obasanjo, immediately after he left office, after two terms as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, his birthday immediately after he left office, he said he could count on one hand of his visitors he received. And then there were only two adverts in the papers. Whereas in the past, you had of adverts. Those are conditional friendships. They had moved on to Yadwa. Obasanjo was no longer important to them. Of course, loyal friends, they respect boundaries. Now, a second scenario that I'm going to paint to you, some of you might be aware of it. I was young, but I followed the entire proceedings then. How many of you know Vanguard newspapers? The owner, the publisher of Vanguard newspapers is Sam Hamuka. Sam Hamuka used to write. Friend about Daring, an accountant, was playing with the figures in the share distribution. And by the time Sam Hamuka realized what about Daring, it was too late. About Daring had used surrogates to acquire the shares of Punch newspapers until one day Sam Hamuka's office locked up. His capital shares in the company 
had been reduced to less than 5%. Ab breached the trust his friend Amuka had in him. He was cheated by a smart accountant, which was the league, or what else could it have been? Somehow, Sam Amuka survived the depression, rolled up his sleeves, renewed his heart, and did all he could and established the Vanguard newspapers, which is equally successful today. But you can see the scenario that I've painted, this is betrayal between two good friends. The third scenario that I'm going to give up to you, I, my time is up, okay. The third scenario is that my first at corporate consulting was in 1997, an organization which was then the largest privately held fast food, uh, which was a quick service restaurant had a challenge of dwindling sales and revenue, including feedback of poor product quality. It was to unravel the cost and advise management of strategies to adopt in moving the company from red to black. At the process, the business owner sacked the MD, which was his wife. She was stealing directly from the company and had used part of the money to build parents in their hometown. His younger sister, who was in charge of procurement, and the wife's nephew, who was in charge of the ice cream. The game of this nephew was to put more than the required water in the ice cream mix in order to yield more cups of ice cream. This poor quality was putting money from the extra cups into his pocket. Now, the action of these three people, his wife, his wife and the nephew of his wife, you know, negatively affected the business with huge losses outstanding. And there were loans standing to the business owner eventually died of heart failure, according to doctors. But I think he died of uh, a broken heart. So let me just quickly run through three things about loyalty. Loyalty is an important component of any business. Not only do you need loyal employees who care about your business, but you also need loyal customers to keep your business into the future. Loyalty is valuable because it allows us in the risk, it allows us to take the risk of predicting the actions and behavior of the people we trust. Loyalty is the put others before yourself and stick with them in good times and bad times. Show loyalty to friends, family, and significant others. Being honest, trustworthy, supportive, and generous. Maintain healthy boundaries with those around you so that you can be loyal to them in an active way. Loyalty has a reciprocal and is a two-way street. While a leader may require loyalty from the subordinates and those he leads, the leader is also or also has the responsibility, not only but to demonstrate loyalty to his followers and subordinates. I'll skip the quotes and I'll talk about loving God. Loving God means being loyal to the one God. When Jesus says that the most important command is all that you have, all that you are, your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, he was citing a verse from Deuteronomy 22, 37. Jesus made it clear that this does not mean loving God instead of people. There is a to love your neighbor in the same way as you love yourself. To care about the well-being of the other person about your own. Jesus understood that God's heart is aching for justice and mercy. So loving God involves doing what wants, showing justice and mercy to everyone. To the extent that we are loyal to the one true God, we will be dedicated to the well-being of people. If our hearts are divided, and we chase the money or national power or political power of religion, we will disregard people in the name of these lesser gods. Let us love God with loyal love, and love for our neighbors will follow. May it be so, in Jesus' name. So that, there was hatred of Judas. You remember that Judas was very angry when that woman broke the jar of perfume 
and it, shouldn't they have sold it and put the money in the treasury? He had been stealing from the treasury. Do you know what? I had that run through, run through my mind that Judas was the reincarnation of Gehazi. I don't know how many people caught that. Uh, they had the same spirit. Gehazi was like that too. Always thinking about what we're going to my share. Praise the Lord. Another good example, which I will not fail to forget, is the relationship between David and Jonathan. Jonathan, despite the fact that he was here apparent to the throne, he considered it to David, knowing of a truth that God was in favor of David. And you see the reciprocal of the loyalty that showed David. One day down the line at a table of feasting, David said, is there anyone of the house of Saul? Let him come and eat at my table. And then they had one who was lame, Mephibosheth. Praise the Lord. So what are the action points? Let me just run through the action points. Do a quick of your relationships. Is there any area of your life that you have acted and behaved without a sense of loyalty? Any betrayals, do it. Do it yourself and take the necessary actions. Seek for forgiveness and restoration. Work hard to win back that earlier trust in your relationships. You know, some people go through life and say, let him go. Kill him, say, no, you know. As Christians, we should never be involved or engaged in that kind of thought. If there are broken relationships, mend them. Bible tells us that if, if in your heart you perceive that you have offended somebody, leave your offering, run back, and go and seek forgiveness. Praise God. Number three, remember that honesty, transparency, and dedication are very important factors in sustaining loyalty. Number four, loyalty is reciprocal. You will be described as a tyrant if you demand loyalty and you are unwilling to show loyalty to family, to friends, to superiors, and to subordinates. Finally, ultimate loyalty is to country and is to family. Don't be fleeting and flighty. You know what it means to be fleeting and flighty? You know, there is no relationship with people. You know, you are just ephemera. You know, maybe the substance of your relationship is just material or it's just gossip. You know, establish strong, lasting relationships with, be committed and stand for something or else you will fall for everything. Moral code is your compass for your loyalties. I thank you very much for being wonderful listeners and I pray that God will interpret and make it real in your lives in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Yeah, we've heard so much about loyalty. It's time for questions and answer by Pastor Ludara. So you can put those in, in, on your paper. You just put it down in writing. Or you might as well just raise up your hand if you have a question. However, I think I want to go first. You spoke a lot about um, loyalty. And I can remember vividly last year, we had um, such a conversation at the Richards Retreat last year. And we spoke extensively about it. One concept kept coming back, kept coming back as we spoke. And the concept is in blind loyalty. You didn't touch on that today. I don't know if you may want to talk about that. You know, the most important thing is that um, I want us to understand about loyalty in the positive sense. Now, we have been empowered not only by the Holy Spirit, but also by virtue of our mental faculties to think things through. The concept of blind loyalty is a form of loyalty. You can't have blind loyalty, you know, to somebody who I would describe, you know, as uh, atrocious in behavior, 
Somebody who has no moral code. You understand? Loyalty will be loyalty if it's direct. For instance, let me use you as an example. Nobody is in doubt as to the character, as to the nature, as to the moral code of Reverend Tony Akiemi. So if as a blind loyalist to Reverend Tony Akiemi, it is in a positive sense. That means that you are totally dedicated to the cause under God that he follows. Yes, that is blind loyalty. But I don't like the use of that word because it connotes negativity. That is, you are blind without reasoning. You are blind without processing things. You, are, you know, you don't look at correction and you are not even helping the person that you are blindly showing loyalty to. Because a blind loyalist will never tell you the truth. And I've told you, I said the foundation of the relationship which loyalty is evident is that there must be honesty, there must be truthfulness, constancy, and consistency. I don't know if that answers your question. It does, sir. Oh, okay, please. Uh, do we have any question in the house? Uh, okay, please come forward, please. My name is Tim Tokwe. Um, sir, I like the loyalty that Peter showed Jesus in the Bible when he cut off the hair of, um, in defense of the masters, of his master. Uh, is it advisable as Christian to go to such extent? Come, please come. You see, what you have done is that, uh, thank God that all of us are students of the Bible. You have only taken one, you know, of that action. The flip side is that Jesus Christ responded. Do you remember his response? What was his response? I think I've answered your question. You know. For those who don't know, Jesus Christ actually admonished Peter. He said, it is not too difficult for him to call down a legion of angels to defend his cause. So Jesus Christ abhors violence. And as Christians, we should violence. The violence that we should engage in is violent prayer. Fire, fire. Uh -huh. You can engage in that in the closet. See, for those who are younger here, I just want to throw an information. You don't respond and react to every situation that you are confronted with physically. Certain things, you take the shame of a moment to go back into your closet to play, and then the glory of God manifests. Praise God. Sir, we have um, two more questions. The first one says that, considering today's world and today's economy, please, my business, so as to checkmate my family and staff. Well, I don't understand how that relates to loyalty. So, who is it that one will be loyal? A friend who he or she trusts so much, but at the end, he or she backstabs you because I'm a loyal person to my friend. The, for the person who raised that question, let me tell you something which may not be new to everybody. Betrayals, disloyalty, they are the currency of our existence. Hello? Nobody alive will say that I have never been betrayed or I have never experienced disloyalty. They are actually the catalyst that strengthens. And as Christians, cost is the one who trusts in the arm. So all of your trust will be in God. You love your neighbors as yourself. You don't put all your hopes on man. All your hope is in God. So whatever the situation is like you have just taken a knock. Stand up. Face God. Move forward. God will take you up and out situation. So tomorrow, somebody else who has a close friend will probably get betrayed. But as Christians, my counsel to you is that every day you ask God to shield you. 
Let God be your strength. Let God be your shield. But that doesn't stop you from showing loyalty to others. In fact, that is the hallmark of a good Christian. You hear people say, oh, I've been hurt before. I can't do anything for anybody. Or somebody, you know, uh, lied to me and defrauded me. Well, that's a generous giver. We're in the month of the grace for generous giving. Even in spite of what people may have, maybe to cheat, you know, or to treat you in an underhanded way, that will not stop you from doing what is right all day. Jesus Christ told us about how to forgive. If we follow that pattern, nobody can ever offend us. Because giving, forgiving, the arithmetic is very funny. I can't even arrive at a figure. Hmm? It's, a, it's a continuous thing. It's a daily thing. So you carry over. Yesterday, you carry over the one that you have not forgiven. Add it to today. And it becomes, you know, multiplied. So you must have grace for forgiveness, the grace to overlook human faults, and the grace also to accommodate people. That, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Good morning, everyone. Please, can we stand up to our Bible reading? Today we'll be reading from Acts, the chapter 4. We'll read the last verse together, 37. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day for it was already evening. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes by what power or by what name have you done this? If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well? This is which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Now when they had saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from they speak to no man in this name. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to more than to God, you judge. So when they had furthered them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Who by 
by the mouth of your servant they have said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants what with all boldness they may speak your word. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as any one had need. Last verse together. Having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. Praise the Lord. Good morning, sirs and mans. Okay, it's time for testimonies. Uh, if you have a testimony, I, I won't mind to have just two people share your testimony, 45 seconds, just to tell us what the Lord has done. Testimonies are a way to prove, you wanna? Okay, that's one. Another person. Testimonies are proof of the faithfulness of God and also encourage other believers that God is still at work. I wanted to use this mic. Don't sing faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so can we have you? Just straight to the point, your name, what God did for you. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Faith Akolo. As of uh, last week, Tuesday, Precisely 8.45, I was preparing to go to work. I went to take my bed, and after taking my bed, I went inside to get dressed. Less than 10 minutes after I left the bedroom, I heard crashes like plates shattering at, my, at our backyard. So I was like, ah, is it our neighbor's plates that were broken? And, but the noise did not cease. And then the ground started rumbling, the foundation of the building started shaking. And I was like, what is going on? The next thing we heard screams from outside, because one of our neighbors was inside our house. So the sister just shouted her name. And with that fear, we all ran outside. Me, my younger sister, and my mom, we ran outside. Saw our neighbors downstairs. They also ran outside. So we all ran downstairs. And getting downstairs, only to discover that from the kitchen, down to where the bedroom is, all that place has collapsed. Just 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes after I left there, from the kitchen, our kitchen was the first one, that is the one close to the staircase. So from that, our kitchen, down to where the bedroom and the toilet is, everywhere had collapsed, from the roof down to the ground. So I just, want to th I just want to thank God because he has promised that this month of December will not take us as long as it's going. As in, please just give me some minutes to just take this song. <laughs> well, sir, well, sir, why alone me met again? Where is so hard me met to judge Where you alone me met
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, um, my testimony is kind of long overdue, but I didn't want to give a half big testimony. I thank God because I wrote my last exam in Unilag on October 29th, and my result came out. They were good to the glory of God. I went to study law for five years, and I came out well. I want to thank God for the journey. In my set, it was as if every year, every session, someone always died. In year one, we had, in year two, we had a day. He died of a car accident. In year three, we had Linda. She died of uh, an electrical fire accident. In year three, we had Prince Will slumped in his hostel and died. In year four, we had Kola. He just convulsed out of nowhere. And some of these people were my friends, unfortunately, but I know that they are in a better place. I thank God because he helped me throughout during exam times. We had an incident, too, of a girl. Uh, it's you know, during exam time, she ran out of her hostel, she had a mental breakdown, and she began to tear her clothes. And thinking about all these people, it's not like I'm better than any of them. It is just the mercy of God that kept me true. And I want to give one particular testimony of a course I did in year two that, well, I didn't fail because upon investigation, I found out that I didn't fail, but they gave me an F. And it was a very trying time. I remember my mom and I going to the faculty, going around trying to find out what happened, going to meet lecturers. In fact, it became an issue that my course advisor and my lecturer were not in talking terms for that. But I thank God because I had to sit for the course again and the devil tried. I mean, it was during that time that our dean of my faculty enforced a, a university rule that if you don't miss 65% of your attendance, you can't write exams. And it was not the time for that lecture that was now clashing with another lecture I had. I them to arrange the time well and everything, but to no avail. So I was um, splitting between two classes. And when the result for the attendance came, I had 64% for the one that I had an F. And I was like, ha. Ah. Anyways, God resolved that one for me to the glory of God. I sat for the paper and I got an A to the glory of God. And finally, I want to thank God for how he preserved me throughout my health. There was a time that I had a major, it was only really major, but it was an health, a health issue that I had to be admitted for. They said I had a kidney, some facial pyelonephritis. And during that time, I thank God for how God helped me. My mom, he really gave her the strength and everything. And my testimony for this basically is about a roommate I had. I can't remember her name now. Our only issue was even worse. She had seizures and brain seizures. And even with that, this girl, you see her, she used to be up and down, up and down. In fact, they had known her at the center a lot because she was always there frequently. And this girl, she would still come, go with my slippers, say she's going somewhere. And I'm like, ah, don't you have people that you can call that can go and help you out with this? They said she has called and they are tired of her, basically. And I thank God because during that time, I, I didn't have that kind of experience that there was anything wrong that I had to live by myself. I had people that were always there with me, helping me th through. And I thank God for that, to the glory of God. I want to thank God people that from this church that helped me throughout the journey. I pray that God blesses each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Can we just pray for our testifiers? Father, we give you praise. Thank you for your faithfulness over every life represented here. Thank you for the covenant, the covenant of protection, the covenant of preservation over everyone here. Father, that covenant will not be broken in the name of Jesus. We will not die prematurely. We will not die before our time in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. 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 God is an awesome God. He does mighty things. I want you to ask your neighbor this morning, what have you come to do? Get your response. I have come to praise God. I've come to love him. I've come to lift him up. We've come to praise you, oh, we've come to love you, oh, we've come to lift you, for the good things you, we've come to praise you, oh, we've come to love you, oh, we've come to lift you, for the things in you, are. we've come, we've come to praise you, oh, come to love you, oh, come to lift you, for the good things you are, Yahweh.
She's over us. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Oh Lord, yes, you have captured my heart, consumed. My heart with your love. If all I say is Jesus, 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 more than enough. Oh, oh. Captured my heart, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. So much love, so much love from the Father to me. You have you captured my heart.
worship you. We worship you. Worship him in the house this morning. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. Call you Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That is who you are. I call you Jesus. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank uh, Reverend Tony in absence and Mom C and thank the church leadership for this opportunity and privilege. Really honored. Can we lift up our hands to Jesus one more time and let's just give him worship and glory. Let's magnify him. 
Let's glorify him. He is worthy of all our praises. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good, his mercies endure it forever. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. All things, they are for your pleasure and were created. There is none as holy as our God, there is none beside him. Neither is there any rock like our God. Give him glory this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. worthy. You are the Lord of heaven and the earth. Everybody lift your voice and say, Help me lift your hands and sing it to him right now. God of the heavens and the earth, you, you are, are the God, God of heaven and the earth. Say, Kabiyah. Everybody, Kabiyah. Olaru Abramu. Kabiyah. Forgive me, I'm very expressive when it comes to praising God. I'd like for you to worship in one moment.
Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. never cease from your lips. Amen. You shall yet praise the Lord. Before we hit 31, somebody here will come with an offering of praise and joy. If you are that person, shout a big If you are that person, shout a louder praise the Lord. it is, it will not be over until it is your turn. You will carry your miracle before the end of this year in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. We lift you up, Jesus. We glorify your name. Let there be a world in season to everyone that is weary. Lord, anoint our ears to hear. Anoint our hearts to receive. Cause that there will be a flow of your word to us today. And we live here graced by God. Never the same way we came. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate him. As you have your seats, thank you, choir. Tell your neighbor, I'm happy to be in church this morning. And I know God has something special for me today. I want us to briefly consider the subject, grace to reign. Grace to reign. Grace to reign. And I'd like for us to pick our first Bible reading on, this, on the subject from the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Revelation, chapter 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, 
Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seas thereof. I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamp as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. When he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell before the lamp, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of sins. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seas thereof, for thou wast slain. And has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and a nation. Verse 10. And has made unto made us unto our gods and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Can you turn to your neighbor and say to her or him, reign on the earth? Turn to somebody else and say the same thing to the person. You will reign on the earth. When we look at the word of God, what we see is our life. God's word shows us as God's children the life that we ought to be living. That's what we see in God's word. That's what we, we see as a reflection when we look God. So every time we have contact with God's word, what we actually are doing is that we are contacting his life. We are receiving his life into our spirits. So this morning, as the word of God has been coming, coming in contact with God's life. Somebody say Amen. You have been receiving his life into your spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. What God does is that he shows us his word so that we can live what we see in the word. So you see, as a Christian, you don't, life and not, you don't have another outside the word. Your life is in his word. So you are supposed to look at the word of God and see it as a return of your life and leave what you see in the word of God. That is why it shows us in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3 verse 18, for instance, it said, as we behold in a mirror. So you see, it said we behold in the mirror. Now, if you are not conscious of it, you will not be able to receive it. You need to be conscious of it. What is faith? Faith is the response of the faith to the word of God. Whatever God's word says, your spirit responds to it. That is faith. So I'm, I'm saying to us right now that as we are under the sound of my voice as it were, and not only my voice, every other voice that has brought God's word to us throughout this year, and that will still continue to bring us to, uh, as we continue in this ministry, that what we are receiving every time you are on this, um, your, that words come from this altar, is that you cause life into your spirit. And as you receive this life, you, you see. For instance, if you are weak and you see strength in the world, look at the world, what happens is that you exchange your weakness for his strength. Because the life that is in that world comes into you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, every we come in contact with the word of God, it shows us who we are. Tells us. Now, what does this place say? Where we read said, he had made us. 
He's not going to make us. He has made us kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. So my calling as a Christian is the call priesthood. And it doesn't matter what I look like now, how I look like now, what God said about me is that in spite of my senses, I am reigning on this earth. Glory to God. And that is not a fallacy. It is not something to give you an emotional feeling to make you feel good. That is the reality. That is the reality in the realm of the spirit. You are reigning on the earth right now. But the challenge is that we keep on looking at our circumstances. That's why sometimes in our mind, prehend the reality of God's word. When God says, you are reigning on the earth right now. Hallelujah. Say with me, I'm reigning. It's kinging. He said, we are kings and priests and reign on this earth. Not another one. On this one that we are in right now. So I'd like for you to shape your mentality. To comprehend and understand that God has already said concerning you. In spite of the fact that you have not paid your children's school fees, you are reigning on the earth. Somebody with me? Your business may be crumbling and seems to be going southward. You are reigning on the earth. What Satan does is to bring distraction to us. To cause us not to look at the mirror. God said, if you continue to look at the mirror, what you see is what you get. Come, Come on, sister. What you see is what you get. This is your circumstances. This is the mirror of God's word. This is what God has said about you. What Satan does is to make us to continue to look at our circumstances. And say, I'm a failure. I'm a nobody. I won't amount to anything. I can't come out of this situation. I'm a sickler. I'm a debtor. Nothing good can happen out of me. Can come out of me. That is Satan's destruction. God said, no, you are looking at the wrong thing. Stop looking at you. Look at the world. So as you fix your eyes on the world, everything God's word says becomes. Hello, somebody. He came to, she, he came to Mary. Thou shalt conceive and bring forth a son. Shall call his name Jesus. Now, because God says so, it didn't matter that Mary does not know a man. Because anything God says becomes. My brother, when we say God cannot lie, people don't understand the meaning of God cannot lie. Let me explain it a bit to you. Please, what is the color of this thing in my hands? Sorry, sir. The thing is this. If I were God, I want to explain to you what it means when we say God, the God that cannot lie. If I were God, and I came, sorry, if all of you together were God. After it says, yeah, God. <laughs> Praise God. If all of you were God, and I'm a man, and I came to you, collectively you are God, and I came to you, let's agree that all of you will tell me that the color of what I'm holding is blue. Is that correct? Now, if I... And... Okay. I came to God, and I want to play a prank on God. To, need to see whether it's actually God. And I put this hand behind me, and I ask all of you being God, I said, tell me the color of the handkerchief I'm holding and putting behind me. What should all of you say? No, 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 no. I said, you will tell me that it's blue. Is that correct? Now, all of you as God has told me that this handkerchief in my hand is blue. Then me as a man, I'll just say, ah, 
and I thought they said, this handkerchief is not blue, it is white. As I'm bringing it out, the handkerchief becomes blue. Because there is something in the DNA of God that whatever he says must be as he says it. That's what I'm going to. Whatever God says must be as he says it. It doesn't matter what the other thing is. When God comes to someone who is sick and says you are healed, it doesn't matter the level of My brother, you are healed. So anything God says becomes. So he, he came to darkness and said, light be. And the Bible says, and there was light. Why? Because there's something about God that, that it makes it impossible for him to lie. He said that by two immutable things by which it was impossible for God to lie. So he told Sarah, you will conceive even in old age notwithstanding. Whatever God says to you, my brother, my sister, it will come to pass. That is why you must keep on looking at the mirror. Keep on looking at the world. Your circumstances is lying to you. That is the lie. That's not the truth. The word of God is the truth. I'm from heaven. Glory to God. So when God says you are reigning on the earth, what do you do? You jump up and shout, yes, I am reigning on this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he says, we shall reign on this earth. earth. Now, God in his infinite wisdom has given us a dimension of wisdom by which, and that dimension of wisdom is his grace. Romans chapter, chapter 5. Everyone. Are you with me this morning? If you are with me, say yes, yes. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. It says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, they which receive abundance of grace. So, God has given us grace by which we can reign. Don't forget, we have confirmed that as kings and priests, we are to reign on this earth. Now, he is giving us the dimension of wisdom by which we can reign. And that dimension is the wisdom of grace. He said, they which receive the abundance of benevolence, of joy, of favor, of unmerited unmerited and undeserved favor. He said, those people that received it, they shall reign. If you want to reign in this life, your circumstances notwithstanding, this are notwithstanding, if you want to be on top at all times, anywhere, any day, any time, it is possible, sir. It is possible, ma. What you need to do is to receive abundance of grace. So those who do it, you don't know how terrible the situation is, Satan notwithstanding, they shall reign. Say with me. Satan notwithstanding. The enemy notwithstanding. I receive today the abundance of grace and I reign by it. Hallelujah. Actually, the word 
receive means those in Greek, those who lamb. Say with me, lambano. Those who lambano the abundance of grace. The word lambano means to take it and make it yours. You see, you take it and make it yours. Give me your, give me your, your tablet, sir. I take it, I give that to you. But if I'm lambanoing your tablet, once I lambano it from your hand, I lambano it, it becomes my own. There is a dimension of God's outpouring upon your life right now. You are going to lambano it right now. In your marriage, yes. in your job, in your working place, there is a lambano, there is a lambati right now. You are receiving abundance of grace. Lambano it right now. Lambano it right now. Hallelujah. I lambano. I lambano. I lambano. So wife, get home today, look at your husband, I lambano it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I lambano it. I take it. I make it my own. There is so much grace in the house, my brethren. There is so much grace we have as Christians. The Bible says, of his fullness have we all received grace. Grace for grace. Grace for grace. You cannot be poor anymore. You cannot be poor anymore. I say you cannot be poor anymore. Then it's a lambano taking place right now. Glory to God. Say so they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life. You want to reign in life? You want to make Satan irrelevant in your life? Lambano that you must do. It's called grace. When you lambano it, the devil becomes irrelevant in your affairs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wishes in your village becomes irrelevant to your affairs. There will be no need for such prayers. There will be no need for any enemy to fall down under because you have lambano the fullness of Jesus. Glory to God. They which lambano. Somebody wants to lambano this morning. Say, I am the one. Say it again, I am the one. Glory be to God. Can we, can we have the amplified version of John chapter 1 verse 17? Is it possible? Let's put it up. We shall see the testimony of a man who knew so much about the grace of God. Upon whom God's grace was evident. His name was Paul. Is that the, okay? Okay. For the, for the law was given by Moses. Can, no, um, amplified. Do you have it? You don't have it. Okay. There was a man called Paul. His ministry was characterized by the grace of God. The grace. Hallelujah. So much of the man said, for by the grace of God I am what I am. Who was Paul? He was more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. He said, nay, in all of these things, you are more than a Do you know what it means to be more than a conqueror? You have not only conquered, you are going forward to conquer. Whatever has been a consign in your team, lift your hands up. As the year goes to an end, I declare you more than a conqueror. Say, I lambano that also. Glory to God. Is Amplified Version up now? Okay, we don't have it. Let's proceed. Now, this man says some things about grace. Three things I want to show us and then we'll continue. In Romans chapter 16. Let's open to Romans chapter 16. Let's see the things said about grace. Romans 16. Glory to God. Look at verse 24. The same thing. How important grace is. He said, the grace of our Lord Jesus, 
be with you all. He now put amen there. Amen. And of course, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, we have the most popular one that we always read. What many you know that Paul was making a prayer. Having seen the extent of grace in his life, he made a in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. What a prayer from Paul. This was a man who understood the grace of God. It was that grace that made him to say, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Because of that grace. Is it death? Is it famine? He it, said it it nothing. What you are going through right now, you need extra grace. You need to lambano grace for your life. So you don't give up. We are not called to live ordinary life, sir. Because we are not ordinary people. We are kings and priests to reign on this earth. We have the life of Christ inside of us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So how can we receive this grace? I will bring two dimensions to it. How can we receive this grace? Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. How do we receive this grace? Acts 20. In Acts 20, verse 32. Verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Someone say the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which believe. So, the grace of God is in his word. As I'm speaking to you right now, grace is coming over you. Whenever God's word comes from this altar, grace is, is, is flowing with those words to us. And we should be conscious of it. We should have that consciousness, that mentality. us to behave in a certain way. It will make us to pay attention. That's why the, 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 the man in Proverbs advising his son, he said, my son, pay attention to my words. He said, there shall be an ornament of grace upon thy neck. Hallelujah. The word of God is your grace. The more of God's word you have inside of you, the more of God's grace you're going to exhibit in your world. Hallelujah. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. You must find time for the word of God, my brother. That's where your secret is. That's where your glory is. That's where your power is. That's where your wisdom is. That's where your strength is. You must find time to study, to meditate upon the word of God and receive grace into your spirit. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Hallelujah. In 2 Peter chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 2. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Is that grace and peace can be multiplied. There can be a multiplication of grace in your life. Somebody say, I want that. Another person say, I want that. There can be a multiplication of grace in your life. How will it through the knowledge? Through the knowledge. So grace comes by knowing Jesus. The more of Jesus you know, the experiential knowledge you have with him, the more of God's grace you enjoy. Hallelujah. 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 You can enjoy grace that can make you look as if you are proud or bragging. But it's just grace. It's just grace. Glory to God. 
I contacted Grace many years ago about marriage. And before I married, I said to my wife, I said, even if one million demons hang around my window, I will still have a very wonderful, glorious marriage. It was an insight into reality. Brought by grace. Contacted from the word of God. You need to sit down with the word and contact grace in any area of concern in your life. Where you have found it, there shall be a reward. And your expectation will not be cut off. When you have found the area of grace in the word of God, you are automatically rewarded. There is no mountain anywhere. Every believer's mountain is their ignorance. There's no mountain anywhere. Every believer's mountain is their ignorance. Glory to God. Say, I'm contacting grace right now. Neba Ramata. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Listen to this. Hallelujah. John 1, verse 14. And the world was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace. Full of grace. What is full of grace? The world. The world that manifested in the form of flesh is full of grace. When you receive, I'm telling you there's no other way out. It's not just by saying the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is not enough. Any devil can, can pray that prayer. As a matter of fact, if you go out there, when unbelievers want to end their prayer, what do they say? The grace. It's not, it's, it doesn't stop there. You must find something from this book. You must find something. You must find something from this book. He's full of grace and of truth. Full of grace. Full of grace. Do you want grace to multiply in your marriage, in your business, in your career, that your, your body, any concern in your life, there can be full grace manifested as you look into the perfect law of liberty. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said it's full of grace. Yes. Then verse, can you bring it up again? Going down, 15. John, look at 16. And of his fullness have we all received. What have we received? Grace for grace. Who made that laughter? I like that. Grace for grace. Of his, so you live here this morning, of your fullness have I received. Grace, there is grace in my life. Grace in my life. I overcome this challenge. I overcome this challenge by the grace of God as I walk in my spirit. Hallelujah. Then, finally, how do you, how do you con contact this grace? There must be an expression. Now, when grace dwells, when the word of God comes inside you, and Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, when that word dwells in you richly, there must be a medium of expression for those words. And that is your lips. See that now? Many believers' mouths are closed. And their destinies are closed. Every closed mouth is a closed destiny. Every closed, even if you are dumb, make a sound. Make a sound. Make a sound. The Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. You must voice something out of your lips. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So when you receive abundance of grace, don't forget, they which receive abundance of grace, when I receive abundance of grace, your mouth must now communicate that grace to your world. Hallelujah. So in Psalm 45, he says, but by right verse 2, he says, look at it. Verse 2, thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Grace is poured into thy lips. This was a prophecy concerning Jesus. So when he came, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks 
Whoever believes in me can never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You must open your mouth and begin to declare grace upon your life. Grace upon that concern. Glory to God. The, the, the life you receive is a speaking life. When we saw God, he spoke. He said, let there be light. You can't afford to close your mouth. That's sometimes I pity Christians that when we are talking, when we are praying, no, 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 no. That will not take you anywhere. You must open your mouth and challenge the circumstance. I say you will bow. Say who art thou, O mountain before the river there? You will become a plain. Hallelujah. And we'll close with that one. Go back. Go to Zechariah. Let's close with that. Mountain. Before the rubber Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof. With crying. Grace. Grace. Unto it. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are going to cry grace right now. But let me explain this to you very briefly. Zachariah was a man who was helping to build, sorry, was the prophet who was prophesying to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the man who was trying to build the bro. Hallelujah. Now, the temple work was going very slowly. If you go to Haggai, Haggai prophesied about it. They, they were, nothing was happening. Nothing was going on. They could not compare the glory of what they were doing to what the temple was before. What's going through your life right now? Maybe everything looks low. Everything looks down. You look right. There is no help from anywhere. Then a word came from Zechariah to Zerubbabel. He said, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Hallelujah. Can you bring it up? This is the word before Zerubbabel. Now, listen to me. The headstone, the headstone, what it means now, the temple was completely down. But God, who declared the end of a matter from the beginning, was declaring the end of the temple from the beginning. This temple was down. Headstone means that inner stone. No, the way they build that thing, so that when they build and it goes up, there will be a small, maybe it could be square round, place up. But what they need to do is just to put the headstone. They call it the cornerstone. Once you put it, the building is complete. At the time of, there was nothing on ground. But he's telling him that Zachariah, Zerubbabel, as you shout grace and shout the final bits, the final bits you need to hang, the headstone, the cornerstone, as you shout grace and grace and grace, that cornerstone, you will fix it. Somebody said this morning, Whatever needs to be completed in your life, as you begin to declare grace right now, you are completing that thing. Declare grace right now. It is coming to completion. It is happening for you right now. You are completing it. Your hands have that business, that school fees, that admission, that job. Your hands as you shout grace. Come on, somebody shout grace. Another person shout grace. Somebody has shout grace. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Prophet, look, begin to look at the concern in your life. What are you hoping for to happen before the end of this year? What are you hoping for? Now, we are going to shout grace seven times prophetically as a sign of completion, a sign of perfection. When you shout the seventh time, burst into tongues, begin to speak in other tongues, and you will see what God will happen. Let's go. One, grace. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. Number three. Yeah. Begin to pray in tongues now. Begin to pray in tongues. Grace is coming upon you. Grace is coming upon you right now. You are completing that building. You are completing that project. You are, you, you are having that admission. Your baby is on the way. Your husband is showing up. Before the end of this year, your marriage will be completed. 
your husband will show up. That car is coming. Somebody utter a word of faith. Divine wisdom is your portion. Shout grace. Pray grace. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. You are completing what your hands have started. You cannot be stopped. You cannot be challenged. You cannot be molested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands towards heaven. I say to you by the spirit of the living God. As you leave this place today. When you call one person, a thousand shall answer you. I say, when you call one person, a thousand shall answer you. Whatever your hands have laid, that seems to be in this, that seems not to be working, I speak to you right now. Your hands are completed in the name of Jesus. Any secret tears you are shedding, is that no man can see, but that only God can see. Today, I wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I say to you, anyone troubling your destiny, Right now, by the Holy Ghost, I trouble them in Jesus' name. You will pay that school fees. You will build that. You will buy that car. You will meet your husband before the end of this year. You will carry your baby. You will have joy unspeakable. And you'll be full of glory. Grace upon your life right now. Hallelujah. Give God praise, everybody. Worship him. Bless the Lord. He's worthy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Let's stretch out our hands to the man of God and decree that, Lord, you increase him in grace and the knowledge of the truth of God in the name of Jesus. From grace to grace, in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for him that the anointing of God upon his life will increase daily in the name of Jesus. The virtues that has gone out of him, that God himself will add more and more unto him in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It's time to give unto God. Uh, Titus in the house, let's package our tithes. Our tithes, as we all know, is the 10% of all our incomes. 10% or more. Let's package our tithes. And um, let's stay with them. As we do that, also let's be reminded that for those of us who have come to church, everybody I believe, with our offering, let's begin to pass.